Welcome to the next part of the module, which covers the Java Semaphore class. This part provides a conceptual overview of semaphores, explains how the Java Semaphore class implements these concepts to enable multiple threads to control access to a limited number of shared resources, and shows how semaphores are applied in Android. A semaphore is conceptually a non-negative integer that can be incremented and decremented atomically to control access to a shared resource. An early use of semaphores was to provide train operators with simple stop and proceed indications to ensure they shared a single train track safely and efficiently, as described at this link. In concurrent programs, they're used to synchronize and schedule the interaction between multiple concurrent threads, as described in this link. For example, to ensure overall system responsiveness, it may be necessary to limit the number of resources devoted to a particular task. Consider a pool of threads performing image rendering, which is computationally intensive, that use a semaphore to restrict access to a fixed number of cores on a multi-core processor, such as two out of four cores on a quad-core system. Before a thread in the pool can render an image, it must first acquire a permit from the semaphore, decrementing it by one, thereby ensuring that a core is available for use. If two threads each acquire a permit from the semaphore, its permit count drops to zero. At this point, only these two threads can perform rendering. The others must wait, blocking for an available permit. When a thread is done rendering the image, it's placed back in the pool, and a permit is returned to the semaphore, allowing another thread to access the core to process another image. The acquisition and release protocol in this example is fully bracketed, similar to a reentrant lock or reentrant read-write lock, since the thread that acquires a permit is the same thread that releases the permit. But that's just one of several use cases for semaphores that we'll examine in this video. There are two general types of semaphores. Counting semaphores allow an arbitrary resource count. For example, our image rendering example used a counting semaphore with an initial count of two. Conversely, binary semaphores restrict the count to either zero or one, which corresponds to locked or unlocked, available or unavailable, etc. Later in this module, we'll show how a pair of binary semaphores can be applied to fix the buggy ping pong program covered earlier in this module. We'll now examine a human known use of semaphores that I learned when I was a graduate student at the University of California, Irvine. Irvine is located close to the beach, so we played lots of beach volleyball on the weekends. For example, the Corona Del Mar Beach, described at this link, had a half dozen or so volleyball courts. On a nice day, however, there were always more teams that wanted to play volleyball than there were courts available, so courts were a limited resource. To schedule access to the courts, a counting semaphore protocol was used that involved placing a bag full of beach volleyballs in the sand, one ball for every available court. Each pair of teams that wanted to play volleyball would send a representative over to the bag. If there was a ball in the bag, that representative could take the ball and the teams could play volleyball. As long as the bag was empty, however, teams that wanted to play volleyball would have to wait for other teams to finish their games and return a ball to the bag so they could claim it and start their game. The semaphore protocol used in this example is fully bracketed, similar to the image rendering example we discussed earlier that granted a pool of threads access to a limited number of processor cores. Java provides semaphores via its semaphore class, which implements counting semaphores, as described in this link. Implementing a binary semaphore is easy. Simply create a Java semaphore with a count of one. Most of its implementation is written in Java, as shown in this path name. Semaphore uses the gang of four bridge pattern, described in this link, for several purposes. First, it inherits the bulk of its functionality from the abstract queued synchronizer class, described in this link, which provides a framework for implementing building blocks and synchronizers that rely on first-in, first-out, or FIFO wait queues. Second, it implements several lock acquisition models via a common interface. If the fair parameter to the semaphore constructor is true, then access is always granted to the longest waiting thread. However, if it's false, or if the default constructor is used, a lock does not guarantee any particular access order. Both constructors create a semaphore with a designated number of permits, which set the number of resources that can be acquired before threads block on the semaphore. The key methods in semaphore are acquire, 
try acquire, and release, which forward to the fair or non-fair implementations selected in the constructors. Acquire obtains a permit from the semaphore, blocking until one is available or the thread is interrupted. If a permit is available, acquire returns immediately, reducing the number of available permits by one. Try acquire obtains a permit from the semaphore if one becomes available within the given waiting time and the current thread has not been interrupted. Release returns a permit to the semaphore, increasing the number of available permits by one. If any threads are trying to acquire a permit, then one is selected and given the permit that was just released. Unlike Rantrant locks and Rantrant read-write locks, there's no requirement that semaphores must be fully bracketed. For example, a thread that releases a permit need not have acquired that permit in the first place. To show how a Java semaphore is used in Android, we'll analyze an example that implements the Video Editor interface, which provides editing and preview functionality for audio and video media items in a project timeline, as shown at this link. Video Editor is part of an internal package used by the Android Video Editor application found in the Packages Apps folder, shown at this path name. Video Editor Impl implements the Video Editor interface, shown at this path name. We don't analyze every detail of this code, just the parts we need to explain how semaphores work. Video Editor Impl creates a binary semaphore that uses the FAIR acquisition model to ensure FIFO ordering of video previews run in a background worker thread. It also defines lock and unlock wrapper methods that call try acquire and release on the semaphore to control the order in which videos are previewed. If the start preview method acquires a semaphore within the designated timeout, it previews all the audio and video items in a timeline. Conversely, stop preview stops the preview and releases the semaphore. The video editor activity is the main activity of the video editor. It handles user requests on a project timeline, as shown at this path name. It contains a private class called Preview Thread that extends thread and starts preview playbacks in the background. When a preview playback runs, it calls the Video Editor Impulse Start Preview method, which acquires a semaphore lock to ensure only one preview runs at a time. If the user wants to stop watching the current preview, the Preview Stop method is called from the user interface thread, which in turn calls the Video Editor Impl stop preview method that releases the semaphore so the next preview can run in the background thread. Unlike our previous example that used a semaphore to schedule access of image rendering threads to processor cores, the video editor activity does not use a fully bracketed model since the background thread that acquires a semaphore is not the same as the user interface thread that releases it. In summary, a Java semaphore provides a flexible synchronization and scheduling mechanism that enables multiple threads to control access to a limited number of shared resources. A key part of its flexibility stems from the fact that its acquire and release methods need not be fully bracketed, unlike Java reentrant locks and reentrant read-write locks. In particular, there's no requirement that a thread that releases a semaphore must have acquired it earlier. A semaphore supports several types of acquire and release operations including blocking, non-blocking, timed, and multi-permit acquire and release operations. The blocking operations of a semaphore are implemented via sleep blocks, which trigger a context switch, so the overhead of waiting to acquire an unavailable semaphore may be higher than locking mechanisms that use spin locks, as discussed at this link. When used to coordinate access to a pool of resources, a semaphore tracks how many resources are free, but not which particular resources are free. Therefore, some other mechanisms, possibly involving condition objects or more semaphores, may be required to select a particular free resource. Semaphores can be tedious and error-prone to program due to the following common mistakes. Requesting a permit and forgetting to release it. Releasing a permit that was never requested. Holding a permit for a long time without needing it. And accessing a shared resource without requesting a permit for it or after releasing it. For these reasons, Java semaphores are rarely seen in Android, being limited primarily to unit tests. <laughs>